Hi guys, welcome back. Today I've got something exciting to share with you. It's pretty unknown as VC development board, but it's kind of a hidden gem and it would surprise you how much it has to offer. Let me present to you UE2YY3568 ARM development board. I hope I got the pronunciation right. You can get this device off Amazon or directly from their shop and the delivery was super fast, like in a few days I've got this in my hands. So no Raspberry Pi like hunting. Kudos to UE2. Let's get started with the unboxing. The package arrived safe and sound. I really like this bunny logo of the Earth. Okay, let's open this. What do we have here? Of course, the designation, it's YY3568 computer and some basic specs, like it's RK3568 quad-core 64-bit processor, it has integrated GPU, VPU and NPU, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth support, dual gigabit Ethernet support, Android and Ubuntu systems, the list goes on. I should also note that I've got my hands on the developer kit version. Inside the box, each component is well secured, we've got here a brief user guide in English, wow, this is a neat surprise. It looks like they are shipping it with DIY case, IKEA style. I love it. Is it cardboard? No, it's made of plastic, but it surely looks like cardboard. Okay, what else? I know this can't be anything else than the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module. And here comes the board itself. On screen it might not look like it, but it's rather substantial for a single board computer. I mean, it's larger than Raspberry Pi and Orange Pi, but otherwise it's still a tiny computer of course. There is also this USB cable and power source. Nothing else here in the box. Okay, let's put the box aside and get this thing out. I don't want to damage these pins. So, this is the first look. As I have said, it's bigger than the usual SBCs. Its dimensions are 120 mm by 88 mm or 472 by 346 inches. Let me give you a closer look at this baby. One thing you can't miss is the plethora of interfaces this board offers to you. I have never seen such a multitude of options on any other board I have laid my hands on. And that's not all, even more awaits on the back side. Oof. Okay, let's skim through them real quick. How should I hold this? Okay, the biggest, pretty obvious, is 2 gigabit Ethernet ports, full-size HDMI, 2 USB 2 ports and 2 USB 3 ports, audio jack and a power source. Let me turn this around. If it's unclear, this is a separate module with the chip on it. It's like the compute module from Raspberry Pi. Here's the M2E key slot to which we can attach the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module. These three are LED outputs. This kept thing here is a fan connector and an infrared connector. Of course, the GPIO pins, the general purpose input-output pins. You can find their specifications on their web page. I'll put the link to it in the description of the video. And these interfaces are I2C1, I2C5, UART serial ports, URRT debug bus, and the yellow one is the CAN interface. This big yellow interface is for touch devices. Below it are the power and recovery buttons that are used to flash your OS images to the board's EMMC or SD card. On the side are the MIPI CSI interface and DSI interface. Up here is the reset button. The red one interface is the 12 volts power source connector. Okay, this yellow one is SPK or speaker. The blue one is for mic and this is for RTC or real-time clock. Yeah, and these two are USB 2 connectors. Flipping it over. Geez, this is endless. This one is a PCI Express 3.0 that can be used for 4G module with antenna. Here you will put your SIM card. Over here is a SATA port and on the other side is the slot for an SD card. Another DSI interface and EDP interface. That's embedded display port. <sighs> yeah, that was quite exhausting. They managed to fit just about everything on this board. Before we move on, I was curious to check underneath the computing module. Uh, just an empty slot here, but always good to be thorough. Let's put it back. Yeah, I forgot about this black bag. What could be in there? Uh, the heatsink that will go over here. And let me assemble this box right away. I'll just try to figure out the build process on my own. It might take a while. And let's stick the heatsink to the chip right away. Voila! 
That's it. Okay, that wasn't so hard anyway. All in all, first impressions after the unboxing. The board itself seems like quality work. Nothing is loose or, God forbid, broken. The box comes packed with everything you need, including thoughtful additions like the heatsink and the funny do-it-yourself case. While it may seem trivial, many big-name SBCs require you to purchase these accessories separately, so it's a nice touch by a UE2 and I like it. Now let's delve deeper into the specs. At the heart of this board is the Rockchip RK3568 computing module, a quad-core 64-bit Cortex-A55 core clocked at up to 2 GHz. It's also packing a dual-core architecture GPU and a high-performance NPU delivering 0.8 tops, that's trillion operations per second, and all of these point towards a decent mid-range performance and a multitude of possibilities. The YY3568 is available with either 2 or 6 GB of LPDDR4 RAM and 16 or 32 GB of internal eMMC storage. Fairly standard for the SBC of this class. The YY3568 is truly a hub of connectivity. We are looking here at a super wide range of ports and interfaces, an EDP port, MIPI DSi and CSi, HDMI 2.0 and a bunch of USB ports, two 3.0 and two 2.0 type A and a couple more 2.0 pin style. There's also an OTG port, a 30 pin GPIO, five UART ports, two I2C, four ADCs, a CAN port and even a mic port. This impressive array of ports opens up a world of opportunities for various projects. If you need anything special for your project, I bet you can find it on this board. Just check out their documentation. I'll paste the link to it in the video description. As it is common in these types of SVCs, it supports two major operating systems, Android and Debian. And they've added one more for you, the Open Harmony or Harmony OS. I think this might be the one small thing where this board is somehow lacking behind. The supported versions is Android 11 and Debian 10 Buster, which is totally not bad. These are still supported OSs and will be supported for quite some time from now. But we need to be honest here. Debian has released by now two major versions, the 11 Busai and uh, 12 Bookworm. And Android's current version is 13, just saying. I've played a little bit with Debian and Android and I couldn't get some stuff to work like uh, Google Play services on Android and Docker on Debian. Frankly, the developers were not bothered by this for a long time, simply because this board was intended as a developer board for people creating their projects, not a home lab server. But let me tell you, these people listen to their customers. I raised these issues with them and they responded immediately with positive attitude, confirmed they heard me and released an updated OS image with Docker supported, SD card boot and other features within a week. Yeah, I could spend days or weeks creating and tuning my own OS image, but this approach by the vendor is one I like very much. And I feel like you should know about it. These people actually listen to their customers. I wasn't able to solve the Google Play services right away as the UE2 company has a few license-related concerns regarding this stuff, but I think someone will solve this in the near future. So now I can just delete the next part of this video where I'm ranting and complaining about missing features. Again, good job UE2. And instead I can show you that I was able to add this device to my Docker fleet of FCPCs. Look, right here. Already pulled and running Portainer agent and ready to serve. See the actual version of Docker? Beautiful. This brings me to use cases of this device. Considering the plethora of onboard interfaces, reasonable performance and openness to things like Open Harmony, I think it's intended to be used as it is named, the development board. With access to all the different types of accessories like displays, cameras, audio, networking and storage capabilities, I need not to forget mentioning things like the M2 slot, LiDAR and 4G module, you can use it to build a wide range of really different projects, from edge computing to smart cars or lightweight thin cleans 
for your applications. I think the developers here focused heavily on lightweight approach to its operating systems rather than trying to cover all the possible use cases. Let me show you one example about how fast this thing is. Try to count the seconds to fully restart this device. I mean, to bring the system fully down and fully up was like 15 seconds. That's lightning fast. To help you get started, UE2 provides substantial documentation on their wiki page and they have an active forum for troubleshooting. I'll put links down in the description. If you express interest, I'll be more than happy to create a few more tutorials to make the most out of this board. Just let me know in the comments below. I've put this device, or better say, its CPU through a few tests and it came out a little bit slower than Raspberry Pi and today's high-end boards, but that was to be expected. You can't compare devices with totally different price tags. The pricing on this board is more than friendly. It starts at $44 for the 2GB RAM and 16GB uh, eMMC storage version. The highlight of the YY3568 isn't raw horsepower, but the extensive list of features we've just explored. If you're an engineer or a student, you can use the vast array of interfaces to build your project, whatever your idea might be. If you want to run a power efficient server at home, you can use it to run all the popular apps you might think of. Pi-hole, Home Assistant, Nextcloud, WordPress, RocketChat, Portainer, Nginx Proxy Manager, Dozel, Heimdall, WireGuard, Plex, Grafana, Watchtower, and the list just goes on and on and on. So I encourage you to check out this board and its accessories. You will have loads of fun with it. The video description below includes links to all the specs, documentation, forum and purchasing options. After spending time with the UE2 YY3568 ARM development board, I am thoroughly impressed with its features. To wrap up, my experience with the UE2 YY3568 ARM development board has been overwhelmingly positive. It's a well-rounded, feature-packed board that offers a world of opportunities for developers, hobbyists and tinkerers. As always, the final choice depends on your unique project needs. And I've gone a little bit further and reached out to the UE2 company, asking them about this SOM or system on module, if there are any plans to upgrade this RK3568 to something more powerful. And guess what? There are. They're entertaining the thought of letting us upgrade this 3568 to 3588 chip, which is much more powerful. So maybe in the not so far future, you'll be in a way able to upgrade this board. And that's another thing worth mentioning. So if I made you interested in this board, check out the links in the description. There's a little gift for you in the form of a discount on this board. That's all for today. I hope you found it informative and useful. As always, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more content from the tech world. Thank you, be safe and bye.